We haven't gotten the word out about the CIMT access tour, the schedule, so there are a couple of ways that we're, that we're making it available. One is just this video right here. Another is a, uh, in a series of outros which will show how to navigate to the membership site and then find the schedule on the membership site. Why all the to-do about CIMT? Well, there's a couple of really great uh, ways to screen uh, for heart attack and stroke risk that just aren't being used very much. Calcium score and CIMT. The calcium score is a great scan. Uh, it's a great screen. It's not a good monitor. You should only do a calcium score every few years. Um, and you don't see that much progression with those. A little bit, but not, but not much. Um, it's easy to find a good one, though. The standards are easily met, and it's inexpensive. The CIMT is not so easy to find a good one, but it is the only really good monitoring device. It helps us manage and uh, understand what we're doing in terms of our risk. If you, you may re recognize this CIMT, it was mine back at age 57. I was in that category of people that thought, yeah, you know, I'm getting a little bit older, but I've been, the, uh, I've been a poster boy for good um, cardiovascular risk management. At age 57, I had 73-year-old arteries. So <clears throat> that, was not, that was not a happy time, but you know what? I have made a lot of changes tweaks. One of the things that I found out was I had insulin resistance. I did not know that. Uh, the other big change was I finally broke down and started taking a statin. So there's a lot of statin, statin haters out there. I know that's an issue. Uh, and I know I lose a lot of people when I mention that. But the reality is the reality. So as you continue to look through here, yes, if this, is a, this blue line is for boys or men. That's the age, and um, this is the, how thick your IMT, your artery wall is. That pink line is for women. Women tend to not put down as much plaque. Um, we've talked about that in multiple places. Now, this was the study that really um, made CIMT, made, made us in science, the scientists aware that CIMT is a big deal. As you see, it was age 35 to 65. Now, um, these are relatively young people. So if you start looking at the categories, normal arteries, class 2 with a little bit of wall thickening, class 3 with some plaque, and then class 4 with so much plaque that it's impeding flow. So here's the thing. A lot of young people, a lot of low-risk people, as we continue to go through that age category, the category, uh, the class one and class two begin to fall off. And here's the thing. I was in class three. I thought I was in great uh, shape, but I had plaque and didn't know it. That's what CIMT is really good about. Again, as stated before, if you can't find a good CIMT, a uh, calcium score is great at, at tipping you off that there's a problem. Then sometime over the next year, as you start uh, managing your risk, I would recommend getting uh, the CIMT. That's why we've spent uh, so much time getting this event um, ready for you. Um, and here are the schedules. Birmingham, Austin, Orlando, uh, Detroit, Central Ohio, R Rochester, New York, and uh, Portland, Maine. As you continue to, uh, to go down through the progression of my CIMTs, you can see I went from uh, arteries that were 20 years older than me, from uh, 57, well, 15, uh, 57 years old up to 73-year-old arteries. At 57 years old, I had 73-year-old arteries. I continued to decrease um, my numbers, mostly by managing insulin resistance and by... Um, Again, breaking down and taking the statin. Um, the bigger item is, well, we can debate what, what had the bigger impact. Now, <clears throat> as you can see here, here I'm 62 at this point, and um, my IMT is still in the low 50s. So I've gone from 15, 16 years 
older from our arterial age to 10 years younger. Big, big change. Now, just a couple of other quick points. Where is the carotid artery? It's right here. Where's the bulb? Right there. Um, why don't we just do the ultrasound? Because an ultrasound only shows you, the carotid ultrasound, ultrasound only shows you these people. People that have so much plaque, it's impeding the flow in their artery. These uh, class one and class two, which are a huge portion of the population once you start hitting your 50s and 60s, those are the people that we're really wanting to find out. People that have a problem and don't know it. So just a couple of uh, review points. This is what we're looking at. Plaque doesn't form inside the, um, the lumen, the place where the blood flows. It flows inside the, it uh, plaque forms inside the artery wall. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for this progression. And again, people in these spaces are not going to see uh, that they, or even know that they have plaque, but they are at risk, as you see here, a vulnerable plaque, which could burst, spew uh, uh, soft uh, plaque uh, fluid out into their artery wall, and if it does that, it can form a clot. If the clot's big enough and goes to the heart, it causes a heart attack. If it's big enough and goes to the brain, it causes a stroke. If it's microscopic and it goes on for decades, it can cause heart failure and or dementia and or blindness or kidney disease. So these are some looks at, uh, how, at plaque. Unfortunately, it's one of the major ways of finding plaque. It's after the patient's already died. As you can see, what we would rather do is find that when you're still alive and still have the opportunity to make a change. This is uh, another post-mortem image. The, there was soft plaque down in this area. This layer right here is an intima layer. It cracked. That soft plaque went out into the bloodstream. It formed a clot. This black stuff is not the plaque in it, soft plaque anymore. It's the clot that came back through the cracks in the intima area. The majority of the clot is no longer here. It's up in the heart, and that's why we're doing a post-mortem on that patient. It killed the patient. Now, what's... Uh, why are CIMTs, or a good CIMT, difficult to find? Well, as you see, plaque is not always uniform in the arteries. Um, if you look in the wrong way, you can see a lot less plaque than you actually have. So getting a good CIMT scan requires fastidious and robust quality systems. Uh, Todd Eldridge has a, um, he, he did his original training uh, at, as a doctorate in the epidemiology and um, how to set up quality systems for cardiovascular testing. So he's got the perfect background for someone to, uh, to run this kind of program. Thank you very much for your interest. So we've had a lot of people ask about how to get into the CIMT event. We've got a whole schedule on the membership page. I'm going to take you some, through that real quick. First of all, you go to prevmedheartrisk.com. That takes you to our website. Click on the membership login page. And membership is free. You just have to give your email address. Then you'll see you've got a menu over on the left, live webinar, second live webinar, CIMT events. Click that button, then click the gray button, and you see all of the schedule for getting a good, reliable CIMT near your area. Orlando, Central Western Ohio, just west of uh, Cincinnati, Austin, Texas, Detroit, Michigan, Rochester, Memphis, lots of places. And most of these are thanks to our good friend, David Mites. And again, CIMT done reliably has got a lot of advantages. Very good way to screen, much better than stress tests, and a lot more comfortable than going to the cath lab. Thank you for your interest, and in, go get a good CIMT near you.